in the LCS. He was yeah. the best top in the LEC as well. Like he's yeah. the best English speaking top laner probably in the world. And he's uh, on break right now, right? And and I think his break ends like at the end of this week or next week. 27th so or something. Uh, yeah. So so we'll see if you know TL reevaluates in a week's time. But I will say though, Jenkins has been very good. It, if this was a starting roster coming in like last year, be like. And then you watch him play, like, okay, good player, like, ready to go. Absolutely. And, and it's so tough, though, right? It's, it's it's like you're a voice actor and you're doing a great job, but you just replaced Morgan Freeman. Right? Yeah. So, well, <laughs> guess what? The the comparisons just aren't going to be in your favor. And it, and it is tough for him. I feel bad because I do think that it's it's so hard to not look and say, yeah, but what would have Alfari done this game, right? Yeah. And it's like, well, Lose on he, he was literally historically good last split as yeah. far as his, his laning phase. One of the most, if not the most dominant laning performances from any position ever in the LCS. Yeah. So uh, was pretty crazy, big shoes to fill, but he has been doing a good job, I agree. But to talk more about the 100 Thieves side, uh, they're on the hunt for their first ever championship. They did, of course, make one finals, uh, but trying to to really kind of compete here with the big dogs and making some roster swaps coming into summer, bringing in Abadaga has done wonders for the team. They look so good overall. Does feel like they are a true threat on every part of the map. Karma remains banned against 100 Thieves. He is not allowed to play that champion. Gwen unbanned. So will Gwen get picked up here by TL? Because it was kind of this interesting thing. You were saying, oh, if you think Lee Sin is the best champion in the game, you can you can maybe ban it away on blue side, but they actually just leave it up straight up. So a yeah. uh, very powerful champion, potential to get grabbed here. Akali also prioritized so highly. I think it's a great pick for TL because Jensen is really great on it. And we saw Jenkins have that incredible pop-off game. So yeah. great. Grab it early. The potential of the flex there are very powerful. It's just a strong champion in the game. The early lane is not good. But post six, you have the threat of the all in. And in team fights, she is such a monster here. Uh, with that being grabbed for TL, I don't think they will take Gwen because I don't think you want to go towards double AP solo lanes. So I'm expecting, well, for sure, they're not going to now with, with Rumble getting grabbed. I don't think you're going to go yeah. you know, triple AP just top side. <laughs> so. We could see it on the 100 Thieves side. It is possible. You know, if you wanted to have Lee Sin in the jungle, potentially, you could have Gwen up there for someday. Uh, it can be play mid, but really in pro, it just kind of hasn't hasn't appeared on the scene in mid. True. Hardly at all. Yeah, yeah. Seen a couple of top lane, but but no one's bringing out the mid rumbles. Diana has been on her way up for a while. This is maybe the fourth or fifth pick, I think, mm -hmm. this week. Maybe maybe close to the third, but certainly no longer a complete stranger to pro Not play. At all. Um, and, you know, we're not seeing the, the Yasuo synergy. We're not doing any of that, but uh, very, very fast clear, solid, like, mid-game team fighting. You know, ER doesn't need setup. You just press the both buttons and, and you're getting something going on. Um, so you have some solid AP damage for the fact that Set and Lee Sin are your solo lanes and, you know, can run the rest of the comp. But Diana can be threatening enough that, that you can kill a backliner if he doesn't buy an EMR. Set is always a, a nice pick, I think, for 100 Thieves because who he is so good on it as a support, so it is a legitimate flex for them. You are assuming that it's likely going to be mid lane, that you probably have your top half of the map drafted here on both sides. For sure you do for TL. Uh, but it's a lot of meta picks. Gwen, notably absent, but will remain so, as uh, has already been kind of passed up there. Vera is still on the table. Senna TK is still on the table. Uh, Excuse me, Senna's already banned out, yeah. so Varus notably absent from the bans. And TL, I feel like, are trying to set up to pick it here uh, by banning out the Kaiso, banning out the Kalista. I wonder if 100 Thieves is actually going to ban the Varus here now, or if they're just okay to give that over and then have an additional Varus option. Yeah. Uh, okay. I think Varus just makes so much sense as a ban. Uh, it feels like they were, they're really setting it up to get an advantage in that bot lane if it came through. Ezreal is still up there. You can go towards some of the less common picks. Uh, things like the Jinx, things like the Kog'Maw are available. Yeah, but, but no Lulu, no Thresh are so commonly the support yeah. pairings alongside them. I feel like a Felios and Feels and like Trist as probably. Right, it's Trist as is like, yeah, that's just kind of what's probably going to happen. I love, by the way, that 100 Thieves played Farming Zig's bot lane. I think he is outstandingly strong in that role. Sure who he played it, but it was with FBI playing support on Senna. I thought it was outstanding in a very, very strong lane and, and a very strong champion. So uh, I, I think... Like, you can just play Ziggs again with, you know, a, okay, not Karma, but like, you know, some other range champion with perma pressure yeah. and, and just play to the dominant lane. Maybe have FBI play that, or maybe just FBI just starts playing Nami. Screw it. Like, who he's just the better Ziggs player. I think those comps can be great. Oh! They go Vayne instead? Oh, this is going to be fun. I was not going to talk about the Vayne because I didn't want to get set. baited. Yeah, so it is support set. This is a really strong scrapping lane. And they used to be kind of looked at as one of the old school answers to the Ezreal. You win in the 1v1 generally 
used pretty heavily. Uh, you can look to try to contest in the 2v2. Of course, you have to avoid that poke. If they go towards the Braum here, uh, that does shut down a lot of kind of the aggressive options, you have to say, from the set. You don't want to scrap as much into the Braum. It can be very difficult. Uh, and Braum in general, I think, is a pretty good answer into a lot of the divers here. There's four melee on the 100 Thieves side. Will it be Renekton top? Very likely uh, does seem to be the case, but we'll, we'll have to see where everything does get swapped around. I mean, for sure it's going to be set support. I uh, will be shocked by anything else. Yeah. So it's just a question of is Renekton mid or top? I think it will be mid. And this is going to be really interesting stuff. I mean, there, there are a lot of melee style champions. I do think the Braum kind of makes Vayne's life a lot more difficult, but also if you miss execute at all, there's a lot of damage here. There's a lot of burst. I think you want to go a pseudo tanky build, especially when you're looking at Rumble plus Akali. Uh, the ability to get burst down there with a Mystic Shot or, or even the Ezreal Ultimate coming out over top uh, can be pretty frightening. But that being said, there's a lot of CC on the 100 Thieves side. There's a lot of things that you have to fight through. And if all the melee are scrapping with each other and Vayne is free firing, Vayne can run over a game in those types of situations. I mean, utilizing the tumble with the ultimate up, utilizing that invisibility really well yeah. is going to be critical here for FBI. And you can't play with too much fear, but with all the CC he has, if the Diana ult is landing, if you have a kick on multiple members, you know, the clap and the CC coming through from set, uh, you've got the Renekton stuns. Uh, there's a lot of champions that are going to be difficult to dive through on the 100 Thief side, and kind of the output that Vayne can have in the best situations is incredible. So I actually kind of like the pick here. It's going to be fun to watch. Absolutely a huge fan of Vayne, a huge fan of FBI, and 100 Thieves have been looking good. Five and two? Six and two over the last couple of weeks. Looking to have a nice seven and two run for their first round robin. More Same as, mess. Yeah, just it, counting sometimes it takes a while. It's, you know, Six just for whatever reason. Six plus one equals seven. Yeah. Half plus half equals one. Whoa, we're going to keep going. And we've got a fun matchup here because we've got Viego facing Lee Sin in the mid lane. Our pro view is Jensen versus Abadaga. There's one free Ooh. pro view match every single week as someday taking the record after all. Jenkins still on the Akali. So there was that last second swap there. Havadaga going to be playing that Lee Sin. Should be pretty interesting stuff. Uh, and it is going to be Ignite TP on the Akali. So this is the aggressive option. Uh, does give you the ability, especially if you're calling up your junglers, to be able to look for those kills, whether it is uh, 2v2 or 1v1. Uh, both junglers are more on the farming side, but when you are pairing the Diana with a champion that has a really good setup, such as the Renekton, uh, that can be a lane you could look to attack. So Jenkins is going to have to be really careful about how he uses this Shroud. I mean, if the Shroud is on cooldown, that's a pretty easy pickup of a kill there, potentially, for someday and closer, especially yeah. because no flash. Yeah, it's not quite the Elise where you lend the stun as well, and it's not quite the Nidalee where you, you know, throw in 300 damage. It's, mm -hmm. it's yeah, it, you're going to be additive, and you're going to help the Renekton or the, the Lee Sin kind of close stuff out. On the Rumble side, uh, he actually is, like, if you look at, like, sort of global win rate data, he is sort of an early game champion yeah. in that, like, he's going to cause a lot of wins fairly early on because he's going to clear fast. His early brawling is very good. He spikes really hard at level 6, and so you can, you can get a lot of, like, 15-minute, like, unsurmountable advantages. It can fall off from there because, you know, his W is functionally not a rank up. His ult ratios are pretty bad, but it won't be like a level six win the game because I, you know, double killed your bot lane, but oh, it's yikes. a huge damage down here. And he can have a pretty strong early impact if they get into fights is, yeah, this bot lane who he is regening up somewhat thanks to Grit as now they flash in a great pimp to flash for tactical gets away from the face breaker. And that stun might mean the kill to who he's one auto away, but so is tactical as Vayne finds the kill. FBI flashes the safety and Core JJ, oh, no, he queued too short, gets the door anyway, gets knocked down. We're already bloody down here. Oh my God, the combo these guys have scrapping it out bike to the death they're at level one the star was so good for TL though how they actually preempted hundred thieves getting to the minions so the Ezreal mystic shots were gonna be easy to find but now they're going in they're gonna find Jensen here one hit flash just to guarantee it Jensen of course flash was already down so the flash follow two fighters for one but it's a three to one kill score already closer just does three camps and walks mid 
You love it. And now watch this. So this this is what I really like is that they're standing past the minions. Like there's you can't even get to them. It's way back here. So they proc the Braum stun onto Hui. Such a good trade, and I think that's what gives them the confidence. But FBI is not backing off. He's playing inside the minions, so Tactical actually can't use it. Then the flash forward there from Hui. Lightning fast reactions by Tactical, by the way, to be able to reactively flash out of that. But the ignite is down there from Hui early, and they're able to go forward to actually get that kill. Core JJ, I think predicting movement backwards from FBI or no, perhaps... It, he, pre he pressed Q in front of him, like between oh, him and, and Bane, then and then flashed two. over it, and okay. it kept the targeting reticle, yeah, so he's yeah, queuing yeah. backwards. Leona E works the same way. A lot of spells work this way. If he had just like pressed Q at the turret and flash forward, it would have worked. Absolutely makes sense. But either way, he is able to pick up one kill. It does go down in the end. And it's, it's kind of funny. This is one of these weird situations where the game just changes a lot now, right? Like. The, the wave was kind of in an awkward spot. So look how much farm who he has. He actually has 14 <laughs> CS. This is not a fasting vein, guys. This is just the way that the it game ended. Now. Because he had to actually, you know, push out the wave and try to reset that wave so that it wasn't just doomed because it was pushing away from them. So he fully resets the wave, which is actually really smart in that situation. As a result, he's going to have a lot more gold than you would normally expect because he got the kill, he got an assist, and he actually has a lot of farm. 1,500 gold. All right, he is exactly tied. He's one gold behind FBI. That's sadly going to change pretty soon. On the farm now. He yeah. just walks up and takes the cannon. I mean, I will say, I'm glad Hunter Thieves are taking notes from, like, silver level solo queue. So I've seen a lot of fasting veins, um, you know, when my friends play League of Legends. Clearly, you know, not I've me. I've seen when you play now, League top, of Legends. Hey, how dare you? I'm not silver, okay? Nice! I'm a Daya! Woo! Solo kill over Jenkins. How do you get up to the top lane? What are you doing up there? You're a mid laner. Does get the kill. And he's got to get Ooh. out of there now. Santorin up here. He's on the run. Rumble in the jungle in the jungle. Looking to rumble in the top lane. E flash. Yeah, the auto's guarantee at Abadaga. Flashing would never have helped him. Didn't have a ward to jump to yeah. either. Good kill secure there by Santorin. Yeah, that's what I was immediately checking. If you have a ward, you can move top and flash to create enough space to actually get away. But since he didn't, just hold on to the summoner. You do get the flash out of Santorin, but a good counter kill there from him. Really spicy game so far here. A lot of action back and forth. So Someday is now playing mid here against Jensen. Ooh. And who he with the Hex Flash just looking to threaten. The wave is actually, you know, slowly going to push towards them for now. So uh, Tactical is kind of in this awkward spot. You know, he, he didn't get a good buy. He was the one who was kind of the big loser in this exchange because, yeah, they got a kill back, but it was on Core JJ. And as a result, Tactical's only buy was the refillable. So he's kind of in this Four. awkward spot. And we'll see. Someday. Playing to the to kind of his weak side is a little bit strange. Can't quite find the stun. Is I guess he's covering that Jensen can push all the way in now, so okay. Uh, Santorin can walk back and go clear Raptors. Mm -hmm. Wolves are up there as well. Top lane again, and level six on Lee Sin. This could be really good damage. The e. Landing punches. Crowd he's going to land. Ooh, Jenkins down to 300 health. I think kick plus follow Q would not have killed, so uh, not uh, a mis-execution, but it is going to force Jenkins out of the lane. That would have been really close. I don't know. He's got, what, 350 health? A little bit yeah. over 300? Might have killed, but it really, really close. Either way, uh, there's no TP on Jenkins, so you know you're going to get a lot here, right? It's that secondary push out of lane. They're going in, though. Ashton's going to land the shields in the way, though. FBI exhausted. FBI nearly goes down, but the punch does so much. You forgot that who he's the real carry. As he goes down, bot lane is already 3-1. to one. Santorin here to control us. Core wants to freeze it, and who he can't break it. Now, what are they doing? Focusing the support vein. Just absolutely <laughs> absolutely <laughs> trolling. Really well played there by the 100 Thieves side. It did look like it was going to go bad. As I mean, you're trying to fight onto the Ezreal through the Braum. The Braum throws up the wall. He has the exhaust. All of a sudden, Vayne is looking like she's in a really bad spot. And she was, except for the fact that Hui is smacking him down. <laughs> He's got 22 CS to his name. Yep. He's got two kills. And he is a really strong supporter. He's got more, <laughs> more than gold than his, his jungler, yeah. And <laughs> a lot more gold than the Ezreal. Oh, no, yeah. We got two fastigated carries here. <laughs> more in the support meta now. Let's go. Uh, Badaga still happy up top side, though. Nine CS lead. The solo kill, obviously a nice one as well. Uh, from what I could tell, it was Emacs uh, Lee Sins. We are going for wave clear. Yeah, there are occasional Lee Sins who go Q. Uh, it is pretty uncommon. I've just seen it once in a while. Exhaust, ignite, big damage. The ult in. Oh! Jenkins gets revenge.
revenge! The outplay there! As Abadaga went, Jenkins went back into the shroud, we gotta get a replay, because when Jenkins went back into the shroud, he didn't have the E cooldown, so he couldn't reveal. He actually started his R, I believe. It looked like he started the ultimate, and it gets actually canceled out because he had no reveal there for Jenkins. So Jenkins going for the aggressive play. That is the E on cooldown. So Jenkins says, yep. all right, you have no E. I'm going back in. Look, yep. that is the ultimate use there by Abadaga. The timing from Jenkins. Are you kidding me? Whew. The monster outplay there. Perfect timing on the Shroud. Cancels the cast of the Lee Sin ultimate. Gets the kill. And those are those, those moments where you have got to have that killer instinct because most people are not going to take that back in or not going to realize that there's this window of opportunity where your shroud cannot be punished because the E is on cooldown from Lee Sin. It's this tiny window. He found it, and he gets a solo kill here. That is incredible. That's going to look really nice in the resume. Jenkins has been great for Team Liquid all split long. And now we get to see what the next big play is going to be. Closer. All right, he's going for Rift Herald, maybe in front of a ward. Might not get to, I'm not sure. Abadaga is coming around. Closer pulls it somewhat out of the pit. They are going to fight it together. Don't mind that Sonic Wave. It doesn't, doesn't matter. Um, Jensen and Santorin looking for a little bit more. Is they're just going to push in the wave? Looks like Jensen wants to recall. Enlist Santorin to shove them out a little faster. I think they want to make it desktop. They I might. think they know this is happening. They're pushing mid to try to get Pryo. Okay. Jenkins coming down too. Smite's going to come down in time. The Equalizer does exactly Whoop. zero damage. And this is why you let top laners play Rumble. <laughs> uh, I hate to see it. That's okay. We'll, we'll see it again in two minutes, and I'm sure it's going to do at least 12. He's scaling. He is scaling. I think he might have hit the Scuttle Crab, though. Cool. He, he's he, great. He's leashing Scuttle for closer. <laughs> even even better. Hit something. <laughs> <laughs> we count it. Okay, you're right. He's uh, he's, he's contributing to global you, warming, you, maybe. You, I don't you know. take the wins where you can get them, free. Yeah, but that's not a win. You don't want to <laughs> leash for your opposing jungler. You, you kidding? Take, take the losses where you can get them. Yeah. Free. Um, <laughs> you know, TL's done very little of that for what that's worth, though. Yeah. Like, winning, winning more than not, so. Well. Can't can't hate it too much. Ooh, wow, actually, it ends up missing. We could have actually recalled, but thought he was gonna get hit by the door. So, all right, backs on up. As ult gonna only tag on a one of the champions, but a nice Ooh. mystic shot. Knew he wasn't gonna get punished. Gets FBI pretty well. And Centaurin, if he wanted to, with a bot pressure, with decent mid pressure, could honestly look for something. But who he wants in goes for the stun. Dunks him almost into the turret. Gets the punch as well and the ignite. But now stunned up. FBI. Gets away from the ulti. Has to burn the flash, though, just to stay alive. Good job, though, by TL actually punishing this this lane that is ahead of them, or has been for a long time. Scrapping on the top side, though, the ulti's up. Okay, Abadaga half held. Jenkins gets the auto, gets a lot of damage in, has to ward hop away. Ignite, will that kill him? How many ticks are left? No, he's going to live. That was the last tick right there, 100 health left. But Jenkins with R2 now fighting the bottom side. Diana sets it up, and Santorin is shut down over here. It can never ult back. Yeah, TL was pushing forward aggressively there. Looked like they wanted to try to maybe even potentially set up a dive, but this time Closer is there. The punish comes through. Abadaga has to be careful, just narrowly avoided getting solo killed again. Did get the kick away yeah. before Jensen's could... Uh, Jenkins, excuse me, could hit yep. the R2 to actually finish him off. And we'll clear out this wave, so we'll watch this one more time. It's the reinvade, but now, yeah, the early overheat there. He actually has the ulti available. He overheated instantly, so Santorin mismanaging his heat can't actually drop the equalizer. Now on the top side, someday looking to pressure, won't be able to get a kill. And also, CoreJJ had used his ulti in the previous scrap. Right. So, you know, when you can't use the equalizer and you, the Bromolt is on cooldown, there's nothing to be done there from TL. So an overextension, a mismanagement from Santorin. Not the best start with his ultis here. This is a turret going down as Someday and Closer reap the rewards of Abadaga's hard work. He had soloed two turret plates, and now a lot more money goes over. I believe Someday got all the solo turret gold as Abadaga, or sorry, uh, Closer's only in range for the plate. That range is longer, uh, so. Uh, Big yeah. leads in mid jungle. Big leads. You know, you're actually looking at, at that comparison there. You know, 800 as well uh, in both of those roles. So pretty significant stuff. Bot lane is also 800 for the ADs. And even more than that for the supports. 100 Thieves opening up a pretty significant lead here. This is just 12 minutes in. And we are looking at a, at a 3,500 gold lead. It's looking really nice. 100 Thieves now looking to get the next major objective as they had pushed in top, both solos walked down. They have very obvious dragon control, but they're not willing to go for it just yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll see if they want to make that play. For now, 
Their advantages are just building, so it doesn't feel like they, they are Ooh. feeling pressed to actually make a play happen. Will Abadaga even be able to win this 1v1? Jenkins doesn't have Ignite, which is critical against Lee Sin, who has a lot of spell vamp. Hard to guarantee a kill when you're behind the Akali, because you can R, then E, and then R2, and you get out. So there's the Shuriken backwards. Not going to find themselves a fight. Now damage on a tactical. Arcane shifts out. Decent damage on a Huhi. No follow through. Really available. Good sidestep for the Mystic Shot. Yeah. But now with bot pressure again, you have to consider Hunter Thieves should be the ones getting these objectives. They're not in an absurd rush, but it's good to get them early. And Closer now starts the first Dragon. And honestly, this matchup is really tough now for, for Tactical. You know, when you play Ezreal into Vayne, you kind of have to dictate the early pace. You have to get ahead because, you know, if Vayne gets to her vamp at an early timing, your poke stops to matter as much, right? FBI, obviously, they won in the 2v2 early, and now he has Zerka Greaves plus the Vamp Scepter, and that's really all you need as long as the Ezreal isn't massively ahead to be able to kind of shrug off uh, the Mystic Shocks that you cannot dodge. So FBI feeling really comfortable down there. They're winning across the map, and uh, things looking really, really good here for 100 Thieves. Plus, the fact that Huhi is this far ahead of the curve, It'll be interesting to see where he goes. And maybe he's just going to go straight up for, for like, Chem Tank because he does have the Balmy Cinder and uh, is going to be completing that Mythic item a lot more quickly than you usually would. Oh, there we go. Aggressive wards now for Team Liquid's side. They are really pushing in and trying to make sure the bottom side of the map can be theirs and they can maybe look for a mid-dive or a collapse on bot, something like this. Right now it's not happening. Mid lane is pushed in. Turret plates fall. Hunted Thieves claimed all of them in the top lane. Not too much gain from either side since then. And we just look at a nice sort of calming mid game now where Dragon's out alive for four minutes, Rift Herald's gone for a little while as well. Just push the waves back and forth, wait for the next big play. Mm -hmm. So far everyone's safe enough to not be easily dove. Jenkins clearly on his side of the map. It's so hard to get an expedition over there that he's probably not the next target either. Yep, looking like Shilbo here from FBI potentially. Uh, I do like the option. Yes, of course, you can go Kraken Slayer and really kind of index on, on super high damage, but it's not such a tanky team that I think you need it. I think it's actually more important to have the survivability to allow yourself to play aggressive and not just get one shot. Yep. Uh, you Closer tries it. in. They're going to get Core JJ taken down. He's looking for the blue buff, and that's not going to happen. He closes over the top buys a bit of time. Gets the health bars a bit lower, certainly better than the last one, but it's still a kick back and 100 Thieves owning the territory. Yep, 100 Thieves just pressing that advantage. They know they're ahead, and Jensen now on the run. Stunned up, takes some decent damage on a half HP. Without a lot of ults available, he's really not afraid someday and gets to walk in. Closer clears out mid. Turret's not to be attacked just yet, but the scoreboard keeps inching up farther and yeah. farther. Closer, very rich. I mean, when you're already behind and you lose control of your jungle, it's kind of that doomsday scenario because you're just going to get more and more and more behind. So TL, if 100 Thieves are playing like this, you've got to pick your moment where you're willing to take a stand and try to fight for something because otherwise you're just going to passively lose out. I mean, 100 Thieves are farming all of their jungle camps, some of their opponent's jungle camps. They're getting the objectives and they're just getting themselves into this really, really comfortable spot. I don't feel like TL have a, any sort of you know massive scaling advantage that they can really rely on. So it's going to have to be somewhat about playmaking, which becomes tough because they don't really have a lot of parting moves, right? It's like a Braum ulti or, you know, Viego's done. Like, these are not inspiring uh, abilities as far as the hard engage. So you're looking more for, like, 1v1 outplays. Can Jensen get a side lane advantage with his Blade the Rune King, this kind of duelist-style build? Can Jenkins get a solo kill? Uh, you're looking for those types of things to try to buy you time and claw your way back into the game. All right, now, Bot is maybe the target of this one as Core JJ, Tactical, and Santorin over here. You can see Closer in Fog of War waiting nearby. The mid laner someday outside of control ward range in Fog of War waiting nearby. If there's a dive, he's going to be there. You can flash the wall, dive in, and make it happen. Tactical, take some decent damage. FBI, definitely win those traits. I mean, if you're in front of a minion wave, Mystic Shot literally can't hit you. The flash stun comes. They want Core. They're going to find a double slow. Tactical, despite his flash, still gets hit up. Equalizer only going to find the tank. And here comes the dive. Closer is in and does what his name suggests. He's going to take it down. He won't settle for anything. Gets the triple kill. And it's now Jensen left alone. Jumps in for a bunch. So keep in mind, he has taken Seth's body over. It. And he's going to go for a third himself. Doing so much work as Jenkins joins in as well. What a beautiful turnaround by Team Liquid. Jensen, the hero here, as it's the 5v4 for TL in the bottom lane. Abadaga does not have his teleport. He cannot join. Could have been a very different story if not for that. But Jensen coming up huge, gets the triple. And the added man 
As we can watch this one more time, they're trying to dive past onto Tactical, which is very risky. I feel like maybe you could have just played this out a little bit more slowly, but FBI flashing into the back line. He gets stunned up by that Braum passive. Santorin is on top of him with the overheat, so he just gets deleted. But then Closer on one side is dominating the competition. On the other, it's all about Jensen. And now again going for a play. Or to hop, flash, kick, tactical attack. He's going to jump the wall, get the Braum for safety, and will stop taking damage. Oh. Ethan follows, but that is a bit too much. Abadaga just gives it over. And Jenkins could want a bit more. But without the ulti available, Ignite won't kill. So can't chase for anything above that. Hunter Thieves only with one, well, only a two kill lead now since one is handed back. TL have nearly clawed their way back into this game. The blind monk definitely uh, looking, yeah. <laughs> looking like he has the shades on there. As taking that one back in was really yeah. dangerous. They want to go for the re-engage. Tactical is a pretty easy target. Jumps in the second time. Ult afterwards. I love the mechanics. Closer played that one so beautifully. Oh. Azonius at the right time. And FBI crits him down. Oh, that fight was absolutely beautiful by 100 Thieves. Closer, you are out of your mind this man is cracked on diana free Woo! seven one and two the perfect timing on the stasis to immune the r2 from the akali he is finding engage after engage he is absolutely popping off here against team liquid that was so beautiful and i can't say it another way that was outstanding i want it in like one quarter speed once the fight really begins yeah, we can see this one more time. They start out on to who he closer yeah. coming in though. Creates space here as he hits the Q on the tactical right in. Notice how he actually holds the ulti. He feels that Better they have the kill. They then he's in. back in as tactical steps forward, baiting him in, gets the ulti on multiple members, then getting focused here by emote. Jenkins. <laughs> <laughs> The perfect timing on the stopwatch, the emote mechanics. You love to see it if you're a 100 Thieves fan because Closer is just roasting him. I mean, th this is early in the game. We're at 19 minutes. He's a jungle <laughs> Diana. He's got two full items, and he already has a large rod on top, 10 stacks on the Dark Seal. He is so fed. Yeah. Who, who's got more kills? A, like, several million dollar salaried team or one Turkish boy? Right now, technically, it's Team Liquid, technically. <laughs> yes, but let's be clear. You didn't do the quick maths on that the, uh, one. Seven, eight, who can say? <laughs> they're, they're close together. One's bigger than the other, I don't know. All right, it's time for bed, Grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> I was counting in binary. I, I, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, all right. Guilty. Yeah, that's, that's definitely how that one works. Okay, <laughs> we got two items here on FBI. He did go for the shield bow. I like the build. Shield bow into PD. Really strong in these kind of scrappy scenarios. Again, I don't think you need to min-max on absolute highest DPS. You just need to make sure you're not getting 100 to 0 And it's going to be a, a tough climb back for TL if they can make one at all. Closing in on a 6,000 gold lead is 100 Thieves. They've got the two dragons. And the question on my mind is, can TL find some sort of an outplay, some sort of a solo kill in a side lane to buy time? It feels like that is the window in for them. Jensen has a fantastic build for dueling. If he can get an isolated 1v1 against Someday or maybe Abadaga, I think he can still win out in those scenarios. So it feels like he's got to get a lot of heavy lifting done for his squad. But if that doesn't happen prior to this next dragon, I'm not sure that TL are even going to be in a spot where they can challenge for this soul point. They're probably going to have to wait till it is literally Ocean Soul on the line, which is usually just the game closer. Yeah, I mean, as it's been going, 100 Thieves have been making the better plays anyway. Like, But yeah, I mean, how do you do it, right? At this point, you don't want to fight 5k down. That's, that's almost a suicide push. But you don't want to fight when it's 7k down because you're going to push more turrets. But yeah, you have to at some point delay the ocean play, and maybe you hope there's a misplay somewhere down the line. It's a tough spot to be in. I mean, ultimately, yeah. that's, that's what it comes down to, is uh, everyone's going to have their own subjective opinion of, like, when's the moment? And sometimes you wait for it and it never shows. Sometimes you force it, and it was too early, and it's a tough one. So and TL, yeah, they'll try. To me, to me, these scenarios become, there's no good fight anymore, no. right? So, so you have to basically evaluate, okay, what are our chances to play this game and win it from standard? And, and I put that generously at 5%, right? Yeah. And then you say, okay, if there is something that is better than 5%, you just take it. You're not looking for the 50% play anymore because this game is far from an even. You are looking for the 10%, the 20% chance where you can maybe find an outplay, where you can maybe find that miracle pick into a team fight win and scrape your way back in because that is better than the odds you currently have. So TL have got to look for their moment, got to be decisive, and we'll see if they can pull a rabbit out of that. Can hope. Can the magic happen again?
Will they get the big comeback? Right now, we're waiting as the timer ticks down. 80 seconds on the Ocean Drake. That'll be Hunter Thieves looking for it. Jensen walking in, clearing the wave. TL get first dibs on mid, but doesn't really mean anything. They can go for wards. Uh, for now, the bottom river looks a little bit blue, so, you know, turn that red a little bit. They got a control ward down to the bottom side of mid, for example. Make that one happen. Baron doesn't seem to be an enticing target. Uh, yeah, both teams hour. have, you know, kind of dueling control wards to see it, so neither team's going to feel in danger there. Yeah, but it's it's now over 7,000 gold, right? Yeah. They, have, they have lost all but one outer tower, and Closer is on the wraparound here. He wants hey. Tactical. Tactical and Core are going to be easy targets. The double stun comes in. They've certainly found Braum. Tactical flashes, and it's going to be Core running with safety as well. FBI getting a bit low, has to flash away. Core so low, though, and it's Diana getting the setup. Why even walk back in? It's going to be two already. Azonia is going to keep Closer alive for now, but could easily be reattacked. But no, it's going to be Rumble dying even before that point. It's a beautiful fight. Hundred Thieves engage it. They get a four for nothing as Abadaga knocks down Jenkins. And Viego can just watch his ruined kingdom fall again around him. Baron ready to be taken. Yeah, they're going to be onto the Baron, and Vayne will make short work of this. The re engage from Closer there. Four men caught in the ulti. The peel from Abadaga as well as Azonia ends. He kicks the one person who could have killed him over the wall. Jensen's going to go maybe for some sort of a hero play, but it's one in a million at this point. He will have to slink away as 100 Thieves grab the Red Bull Baron. And they are in full control, playing so well. We can watch this one more time again. Good positioning on the flank here on the top side from Someday as well as Closer. Tactical going the only way he could. Who he starts it up. And as they kite back here, TL naturally groups. And then Closer sees his moment. It's four members stack, flash, E and a mult immediately. Hit him all with the ulti here. And then watch Abadaga. It's the stun into the wall with the condemn. And then as the Zonias is ending there from Closer, he just kicks him over the wall. So denies the shutdown going over there to Santorin. Abadaga playing really well here with Closer. The mid jungle duo and this yeah. one, you know it's all about the jungle. You've got to protect the Diana. That is a thousand goals shut down you don't want to give over. But I mean, now they got Baron, they got Soul Point. They are 10,000 gold ahead. And this one is just absolute domination here. So beautiful to see as well, because Closer was was not having, I think, his best year in spring. Yeah. Like, it, you know, he, he was so, so good, part of that Golden Guardians run in 2020. The most of the roster came over to 100 Thieves, and, and he was not the same player uh, throughout the spring split. But games like this, like, these are the games I remember him for in the previous year. Yeah, not every single one went 10 and 1, but he was so big, and he's doing it again now. Abadaga is forced to run away. Like, Jensen is the one strong member. Mm -hmm. You know, he's got two completed items. You know, the shield blow in the Rune King, that's not bad. He's 3 and 1, but, I mean, also, everyone on the opposing team is so fed. Yeah. Like, even though he's doing well, everyone else is bigger. And the biggest problem is, despite the fact that he would definitely win against the Soul Laners in an extended 1v1, they don't have to take it, yeah. right? They, they, they're not going to opt into that. They're just going to back up because they know everywhere else is winning. Jensen's the only strong member on the map. So whoever's matching Jensen, just don't fight Jensen. Yeah. And guess what? The 4v4 is unwinnable right. for TL. The, the, the way 100 Thieves lose is someone taking an ego fight because like, oh, we're ahead, we're winning. What? Viego's so overpowered. <laughs> it's like, just just chill. Just like put your ego in check, chill out, let your team win and just be okay. And Abadaga doing that. Right, knocks on the minions, stays out of range of Jensen's engaged tools, and yeah. good to go. Collect your paycheck, collect your win. <laughs> I mean, surprise, surprise, the game isn't about the two, three, and one lease in. <laughs> so you can just sit there, you can push in the minions, you can say, thank you, Closer, yeah. yes, Closer. Yes, Closer. Yeah, would you like the blue buff, Closer? I'll leash that for you. <laughs> yes, sir, right away. <laughs> Absolutely. That said, some games have been about that two, three, and one lease in. <laughs> we've, we've been there. They, they like to think it is, <laughs> like think but it's it really not. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. Someday, slowly pushing to the top side. Jenkins can try to wave clear, but you can see the cannon minion just whittling down that inhibitor turret. Someday doesn't even walk into auto attack range, just dances around, tries to keep a Kali threatened. And okay, it's time for the big play, right? Jenkins tries. He pops the, the first shield, but R2 is down, so Someday ults and walks away. And now who? He wants a bit more, finds the clap back, but Equalizer might set it up. Oh, that is a Zonia's Hourglass. And the aggressive play comes in to bite 100 Thieves in the back. Yeah, yeah, they could have just backed off. You know, you still have push on the other sides. Are you going to go in? Yes, they are. Core JJ puts the ulti down. Azonia's is going to keep Closer safe, but Lee Sin is there. Tactical jumps back to safety. Here comes Closer in for one. Low health bars, though. Can he get the chase down? He cannot. The lockdown is too good. 100 Thieves.
keep the Diana alive. Mr. President is still there. The Lunari will rise again. Abadaga still on the front. They're going to find Jenkins yet again. Still Oculus. A big triple stun from Huhi. That means Jenkins is down. Core JJ is next. FBI shuts him up. And another couple of shots go in towards Tactical's face. One man left alive. I have seen this play. It's not the vein. It's everybody else who's diving the turrets. <laughs> FBI is the one man who does not sin as the rest of the squad will have to give up the chase despite four deaths. They're not enough alive to close the game out. Abadaga just wanted to get to do one fun thing this game. He got to solo kill a collie. <laughs> That's true. That was too long ago, Freak. That was like 25 minutes ago. He's <laughs> looking to have some fun here on the extra dive. In they go. Closer with the nice timing on the Zonias here. And then Abadaga pushing tactical back. But it is who he clapping multiple members together. And the difficulty is, even though you push Closer out, Vayne is still just really strong at this point in the game. And Akali does not have ulti because they went for the play on the top side. So Jenkins did not have the ultimate to actually be able to execute FBI. Or maybe this is that different fight. But there again, Hui finding the engage. They kill off Core JJ. And then Abadaga, he's feeling he himself. Took, he he decides to go for it. Ah, flashes in even. Gives over the shutdown, but... Not going to matter too much. They're still enormously ahead. 13,000 plus gold lead. Ocean Soul here available in 45. So you don't even have to press too heavily if you don't want to. More defensive-ish items coming through. The Bloodthirster now for Vayne. Again, I, I like this style. You are so far ahead as far as the gold lead goes. You just need to make sure that you're not instantly dying. And... Whatever stats you got, those yeah. are going to carry you through. You're just hey, so rich. My fantasy points are thinking how Hunter Thieves is playing this game out, though. Yeah. Right? Drag a little bit longer. On my fantasy. I, I'm 100 points down coming into the day, and I was like, please, a bloodbath. Please, a bloodbath. <laughs> and uh, I've got who he is. Play for Elder. Slow it down. So the problem is, Abadaga is one of my Hunter Thieves players, Ooh. not like Closer or someday or FBI. So, to see so it happen. you know, who he is there, he's doing well. So we have that one in common, at least. And we're going to have the ocean fight coming in pretty soon. Here comes the first dunk Abadaga. on in. Core JJ stunned, but he's very tanky. Yes, Lee Sin on the the flank. Diana comes in, finds the first kill. Here comes Lee. Goodbye Tactical to stay alive, but doesn't even matter. It's already two kills picked up. It's just not going to be enough. Tactical finds a single kill and they might not find another. Trying his very best and it's not going to happen. FBI finalizes the fourth kill. Tactical left alone. Here comes Someday. Tactical's not going to have anywhere else to go. Lee Singh to follow the queue and it's Someday who finds the kill. The Bud Light Ace finally for 100 Thieves. 26 kills in 30 minutes, we got ourselves a bloodbath and we got ourselves a dominant team. 100 Thieves temporarily tie for the most wins in the LCS awaiting TSM in 20 minutes, but they have been looking good. Seven and two so far in these three weeks. What a win over Team Liquid. What a fun game to watch here. So many individual outplays. Both teams playing with the utmost confidence here, scrapping it out. We yeah. saw it from level one. We saw back and forth solo kills on the top side. These teams were going at it. And this game was so much, I felt, about individual mechanical outplays, about yes. the, the slight differences in some of these fights, in some of these scraps that then became a landslide game for 100 Thieves as they were the ones that were getting those outplays in the fights. They were the ones that were coming out on top better coordinated and better executed in a lot of these fights. And at a certain point, it just no longer mattered if Steel had the good play because they were just too far down. Yep. Closer was a smurf this game, by the way. <laughs> yes, outstanding performance on the Diana. Anytime, like the players there heads it off, I will be happy to cheer those players on. That was such a fun game. I want 100,000 of those. I want an entire season of games like games. This. Really, really good games. Really, really highly skilled play. Bangers the whole way through. We got scraps in every lane. It was outstanding. I, I loved it. That was I a loved really, it. really fun game here. Honestly, like there, there have been some messy games in LCS, sure. but there have been so many fun games. I feel like this split, like so many crazy endings with with base races and ridiculous yeah. scenarios and and these crazy team fights to, to to actually finish things out. I've been having so much fun being back in the studio. Yes. I feel like the players are re-energized here. You can see Closer getting ready behind us, <laughs> so we're gonna get an interview with him. Surprise, Good. surprise! I Wise guess choice. He's probably gonna be player of the game. Yeah. So I know production asks us. I actually heard Kobe and Flowers do this yesterday as well, where they're like, we get asked like between the calls, like. Hey, yeah. Player of the game, but it's like somebody just say it out loud. You're like, hey, by the way, it's closer. Yeah. Uh, play of the game closer. Uh, anyone, anyone debating here in this one? No. <laughs> okay, good. Um, yeah, this is very obvious. I mean, absolutely huge. Like, really, really beautiful plays from him. Mm -hmm. The the and 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 I mean, 
Zone isn't going to Kali ult. Like, that is only intuition. Like, it is not humanly possible to react to a Kali ult from, you know, 30 units away. You would just die if you didn't guess he was going to press the button and hit Zonia's on time. Yeah. So, like, he, like, won Rock, Paper, Scissors in, like, way higher stakes than that game looks like normally. And, I mean, we, we saw so many cool individual outplays, right? You know, e even on the TL side, they had some really good ones. You know, Jenkins, I think, using the Shroud to actually cancel the Lee Sin kick on the top side to get yeah. that 1v1 kill against Avadaga. Uh, even Tactical, reactively flashing to who he's Flash Clap coming in. If you were split second late, he yeah. instantly dies there. That's like, a predictive, too, by the way. Yeah, there, there was some really incredible plays here, but it was all about closer at the end. Yes. He reigned supreme. This man was crushing it. He was crushing it, and now we're going to head over to the stage for our Verizon post game interview with Latigris and our player of the game, Closer. <gasps> Thank you, Freak. So, Closer, why is your Diana so good? <laughs> I think it was a really good Diana game, and I kind of popped up on some team fights. And after some point, like, I was pretty fast and unstoppable, so it was a good game, yeah. Super fun to watch for anybody that was also checking in the pro view, tracking you the entire time. And at moments, we're thinking, okay, what about the Viego on the other side? What about the Akali? How much were you focused on making sure that they couldn't get into any funny business? Um, I knew that if, if I'm getting uh, strong enough, like I can 1v5 the fights because they didn't really have a CC to stop me. And once I got like a triple kill on bot lane, I knew that game's over. Yeah, it felt like it was over in just the moments you went in with the yeah. Moonfall sometimes. How much have you been practicing Diana, especially considering her surge in popularity? I mean, to be honest, I really want to play this pick. I, I was practicing it for a long time, but this this game was the right game, I guess. Since they've been banning our, like, Karma, Lulu, Zinza, like, every game, I felt like this was a Diana game. And I feel like people started to forget me, so I want to say I'm still here. Very memorable. Is it a surprise to you that you got player of the game today? No, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> not to the audience either. We will get a chance to continue breaking down this game on the other side of the break, so make sure you stay tuned for the State Farm Analyst Desk. <laughs> 